Hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl DeVille from the Toronto Knitters Guild, and I have the great pleasure this afternoon of interviewing Sophie Deschamps, aka Dolphina. And this is um, Sophie's first year as a Faux Frolic vendor for Frolic 2022. And we're just going to have a great conversation. So welcome, Sophie, very much to, um, to the Toronto Knitters Guild. I'm super excited. <laughs> This is going to be great. Thank you for having me. Really, it's an honor. Well, we're delighted to have you as well. And I know that you have many followers, but uh, for for the guild members and anyone who's watching the video who is not completely familiar with you, please tell me a bit about yourself because I know you have things going in many directions. So love to hear all about it. All right. So my name is Sophie. I'm first and foremost a bag maker. So just so people know, I started sewing when I was about seven years old. I learned to knit from a coloring book the following year and I pretty much never really stopped. And back in about 2014, 2015, I started just making bags for fun. And the first bag I made was my very famous box bag. It's a very tiny bag, mostly for like single uh, skin project, men's hats, socks. It's perfect for socks. So that was my first, my very first bag. And then I introduced a little more. I started to sell at my local LYS, which used to be the Knitter's Trade in Kingston. And at first, I didn't really know where I was going so I did all kinds of stuff I did like a farmer's market in Kingston I did and then in 2018 I was accepted at the first edition of the Kawartha uh, Fiber Festival which used to take place in well it's still in Fenland Falls and then after that everything snowballed and yeah so I went from just bags to I started curating very close to my art and various like people I'm really close with as far as indie dyers and at the moment I carry uh, timber yarns from Guelph I also carry pretty string from Ottawa I add over the weekend for um, Knit City I add sticks and stones from North Bay and I also have uh, only one base from Primrose from Pennsylvania, I carry the Olmstead in sports and worsted, and that's it. So that's where the collective part comes with from your name, Dolphina Collective, correct? Exactly. So, and also, um, I am a PTSD survivor, and I have a uh, diagnosis of uh, complex PTSD. I'm in my fourth therapy at the moment, which will last until the end of June. And at first, I was kind of afraid that if I was in a like in a bad spot and I wouldn't have the discipline and the motivation to actually sew, I was like, well, the pairing of like yarn and bags is perfect. It makes my booth look, look amazing. It's colorful, it's fun. And so that's how it started. And I'll bet you found that all that collaboration also very supportive as well. I am a firm believer in community over competition. So I love, I'm, if I can lift my friends that are fellow makers, I will do it. And yeah, that's how it started. Oh, that's really nice. And, and I, and I love hearing about it. And you're right. I think all of us, we all have stuff. Everyone has stuff um and getting together and doing the things we love just is, is so heartwarming and it lifts you up as you say and 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 uh conversations happen throughout and, and you just go go away feeling feeling better i'll tell you like the whole weekend at, at net city it was overwhelming all emotional i was with like having people like I've been doing like virtual for the last two years and like seeing people touching hugging and like being surrounded with like like-minded people was so refreshing and energizing and fun so yeah 
Yeah, I totally get that. So obviously we're virtual, a virtual frolic this year. Hopefully next year we'll be in person because we miss it too. But tell me, I know you had a good time at Knit City. So tell me if I had come to Knit City, what would I have seen in your booth? So I like, so there was all the people that I told you about, a lot of colors. And one of my signature thing is, so let's rewind. 2020 was a really difficult year for me because I didn't really pivot fast enough, I find. And I was looking at other of my friends that are also makers and they were like thriving because people were stuck at home and were looking for stuff to do and stuff like that. And then it wasn't going that well for me. And at the end of November, I was like, why am I doing this? This is way too much work. And I went, in down this rabbit hole and I was like, screw it. I'm getting rid of everything. I'll put all the fabric in the garbage bag and that's it. And I sat down and I kind of regroup and it took about two days and I said, no, no, come on. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna stop trying to please everybody and make my bags and what I do a real representation of me instead of so from there i changed my logo i changed my aesthetic i stopped trying to please everybody and just following what the trend was and said no i'm colorful that's what makes me happy that what makes my recovery with ptsd better let's go and so I'm known now for sweary bags, funky bags. I'm covered in tattoos. So a lot of my bags are, you know, tattooed inspired. So yeah, and here I am. Yeah, and, and, and does it feel, does it feel validating? Does it feel like you're doing the right thing for yourself first? I do the thing and people recognize it. So when they're looking for a dolphin, like, People will walk down the street, but they'll be at Net City and say, oh my God, so funny. Don't be honest, I saw your bag. Like this, like, so now I really have something that represents me and that is easily, you can identify the fact that it's a Dolphina bag, like on the street, yeah. which is, so. And would you have um, a product that you find is one of your best sellers or what are what do people respond to typically? And is it the same thing that you love the best or what? Have There's you been evolution over like, which is great. And I started introducing, I try different bags and by no means, I'm not a designer. I have great um, designer that make only bags. So I don't take credit for any of it, but I will actually turn it into my secret sauce pretty much. So probably the, my bestseller has been the box bag. Um, and because it's been probably the first one I've made. And right now it's funny because I started making a larger bag, kind of like a traditional square bag. The only thing is I like sturdy bags that are kind of stiff that they can, like you can set on a table and it's really, it's going to hold its shape. And this bag has an inner zipper. And at first I hated making that bag, but it looks amazing. And then with experience and practice and the amount I make, now I have kind of a system and I'm more productive and it's becoming like my new bestseller. It's not quite where my box bag is, but it's getting there slowly, which is That's great. awesome. And where do you find your fabrics from? Because as you say, you've got very unique fabrics with, with you know, a range of funky and sassy and sweary um, images on them. So where do you find your fabrics from? So mo I would say 100% uh, of the exterior of the bags are fabrics that are found on Spoonflower, which is a print-on-demand service from uh, the United States and I work with a ton of extremely talented graphic designers but mostly one who's located in Victoria BC her name is Cynthia Fernet and she is pretty much my spirit animal everything she does I I love so she's amazing 
So you work with her to design an image that then gets printed on a spoon flower fabric? Or even sometimes she'll just come up with something and then I'll go on her site or she'll post something on Instagram and I'm like, I need that. Wow. Wow. So your bags are not necessarily, or your fabrics are not necessarily going to be seen anywhere else then? Well, there's a lot less chances. Like I don't do rifle paper as much as I love it uh, because it's not me. Yeah. Like it's cute, that's fun, but it's not me. So yeah. and there's room for everyone. So you may as well do what feeds your soul and 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 says who you are. Exactly. And which is the great thing. I mean, I admire a ton of bag maker. I purchase bags from like all kinds of people. I'm a big fan of Jessica Andre. I'm a good big fan of Sandy by the Lakeside. I like, I mean, there's tons of them and I love supporting like everyone because, yeah. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. So you were saying to me before we started the uh, video that you're you're um, hoping to uh, develop your own studio to spread out. And, and so what are your dreams of a perfect studio and how how do you organize all your stuff? Because that is such a. <laughs> well, such I a think problem. my I think my my asset is. I organize without organizing. So, but my dream studio, so it, it's coming together, but it's not quite there yet. And there are some equipment that I'm actually looking for. And like, I want to mix stuff. And over the pandemic, I discovered quilting. As weird as it sounds, I started sewing when I was a kid. But... I have a hard time sewing straight and cutting straight. So you can get away with a lot when you're making bags or clothing, but when it comes to quilts, it's a little more touchy. So if you don't like, oh, make a quilt, oh, but then I discovered all kinds of tools and rulers and templates and, oh, it was a bad rabbit hole. So it, it's yeah. It's a good rabbit hole though. Yeah, ac yeah, accuracy on that seam allowance makes everything go together well. <laughs> The funniest thing is I did a um, workshop with Libs Elliott, who is actually from Toronto, and I adore, I have a ton of her fabric, and I did this workshop without even knowing what was the average or required seam allowance for a quilt, and I was like taking the class with her and stuff, and I was like Googling, and <laughs> it was funny, but yeah. You're not the only one to start that way. And, and you have to start somewhere, right? And I can see you enjoying Lib's, Lib's vibe and, and uh, their, um, their designs in that. It, it makes total sense that, uh, that you say you like Lib's Elliot. Fabulous stuff. Between so, Lib's and Tula Pink, it's like, these are my, like my mainstream fabric that I really adore. And then I got into the whole quilt coats and vests and, and I have like, a, I'm hoping to have a few sample for the frolic. That's one of the things that I'd like to introduce. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm going to have all the supplies I need for it, but that's my new, that's the new rabbit hole. So that, that is cool. That's cool. Well, if, if it's ready, we'd love to see it, but um, what else are you planning on, on offering for the frolic or bringing, having available for the frolic? Do you, have you sorted that out yet? Well, I just got a brand new uh, shipment of new colors from Primrose, which I'm very excited about. I'm gonna have a, so I'm really good friends with Heather from Timber Yarns and they just released for, for mom's birthday, this amazing self driving yarn that looks like this rainbow cake. And at first I think she didn't really want to wholesale the whole thing. And then I kind of called her and said, are you sure? <laughs> so I might have a limited quantity of the the birthday party um, yarn for that occasion. I picked a bunch of new fabrics on Friday that should arrive like probably Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm hoping to have like a bunch of new fabric for for the frolic. So I'm excited. It'll be that, fun. 
Yeah, that's very exciting. It'll be exciting to see them. Now, I noticed, too, that you also um, do your own interviews and you have a YouTube channel. So tell me a little bit about what that's all about. Well, the main reason, so the goal that I had at first is I wanted to introduce, let's, let's, let's rewind. For a weird reason, I started to have more connections with people in the States versus people in Canada. So I was known a little more because I'm good friends with Chelsea Yarns with a bunch of like um, other makers and, and shops like Black, uh, Black Mountain Yarn Shop and like a bunch of places. And that's where my love of indie dyers actually started. And then I came back here. So I wanted to present the fabulous artists and makers that we have here to them and vice versa. And my dream would be to be able to have all my interview subs. So with the French people, well, at least the people in the States can understand and discover new designers and makers and all that stuff so and that's pretty much how it started and it's really the inspiration there was a thing on youtube on the vogue youtube channel like not vogue knitting but vogue youtube channel where they were asking like 45 questions to celebrities so i started mine with 75 questions because i was born in 75 so it can be rapid fire or like more of a long answer type of question. So, and so people can, and it's all kinds of th stuff. Like, you know, what's your favorite cocktail? Uh, what's your best memory with your kids or, so yeah. So that sounds like fun. It's really fun. It's called the Dolphina Show on YouTube. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And a bit of a different way of getting to know um, a lot of the people in the fiber industry because I don't think I've seen a kind of 75 question rapid fire um, in this in this industry. So that's really cool. And what I was trying to do is really to get to know the person more than, because a lot of people you see them on different channels where they talk about what they do. I have a really small section that I ask questions about more the, the fibery questions and their love and their, like maybe their, their woolly dream, vac like vacation or something like that. But most of the interview is really about the person itself. Like I really want to get to know, and I want people to get to know these artists like on a more personal basis. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you five rapid questions then. Let's go. And I don't even know what they, okay. Favorite color. Pink. Favorite season. Yeah. Uh, there's a good thing for all seasons. I can't say, I can't say summer cause I can wear knits. I love my son and, and the warmth, but yeah. So all the season. That's okay. Favorite drink. Gin and tonic. Mine too. I have a bag and the colorway just for gin and tonic for me, by oh. the way. <laughs> okay, that's mine too. Um, favorite place you've traveled to? Billy's. Why? I was mm, a lot younger <laughs> and I left with a backpack and I did the whole country from one end to the other. So I visited all kinds of fun stuff. I actually um, went in a tube in a cave with a guide. I went to a pyramid in Guatemala. I scuba dove, I snorkeled, like you can do everything. It was amazing. It sounds like you had a great time. Okay, favorite movie? The Silence of the Lamb. Ooh. And one of your guests? Colorista Geneviève and I back when the first Knit City was supposed to be together. I did a little, I do a lot of collabs with all kinds of people, and one of them was with her. And Geneviève actually dyed a colorway for me that was called Clarice and Annibal. 
Oh, we're interviewing jean Viev next week. <laughs> She's so cool. I can't think of any other favorites right now. Okay, tell me, um, I know you have something coming up that you've been talking about on your Instagram lately, something that you're entering in. Tell us about that. So my local quilt shop um, actually reached out to me and showed me something on the internet and said, that is right up your alley. So there is a big contest called DIY Era where you can win $25,000 and a two page spread in the Make Magazine. And I submitted my profile and I've been bugging people on my stories and on Instagram and Facebook. And I actually made the top five of my group. And this Friday, no, this Thursday at 10 p.m., it's the next cut. So they're taking the first of all the groups and we're all going to the, quarter, the quarterfinals. But I came up with an idea to actually raise money because they have free votes. So I invite people to go every 24 hours and put in your free vote. But if you want, there's also impact votes. So you can buy votes where all the money goes to the um, American Lung Association. And I was like, well, that's kind of so I decided to like try to like get more people to be involved is to do a big raffle. I have a fantastic prize, which is worth over $2,500. And you can actually go on my website at www.dolphinacollective.com and you can buy like tickets. So for each American dollar, that you actually buy, you get a chance to win. And like I said, there's like a ton of really good, really, really good prize from all over the place. So if you wanna get to know like some American dyers or you wanna get to know more Quebec dyers or like I was overwhelmed with people's generosity. So over since yesterday, I collected a good chunk of money and I'm currently in first place in my top five. So keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did I did take a peek yesterday at the list, and it is an amazing list of prizes. And that's going to one person. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, that's fabulous. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at that too. And then when is the final winner drawn to be the winner of the uh, DIY Hero contest? So the final, hopefully I'm going to make it, is actually on May 7th. But like I said, the first, like this coming cutoff is this Thursday. Next Thursday is the cutoff of the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then. Okay. And as you say, you win $25,000. And what else do you win? A two-page spread in the Make Magazine. So the big plan for the 25 grand because I have plans, you know. Um, I would love to get a 10 needle embroidery machine so I can start personalizing my bags, so I can start offering people, other makers, their, their like the, the possibility of getting customized patches, like swag, apparel, all that stuff. And there's also, because I have a vision, like I want to make funky quilt coats and then somebody can come to me and say, I have this really cool picture, then transfer the picture into an embroidery image and then embroider it at the back of a quilt coat or on a bag or something like that. That's where I'm actually going with that. So I can scale my business because, yeah. Well, fingers crossed and... Um... Yeah, that, that would be fabulous. That would be fabulous. I try to think of, um, we've talked about what's next. Is there anything that you would like to tell us or something that people never ask you and you would also always like to share about you or your business, anything? I'm a pretty, I'm pretty much of an open book. If you follow me on Instagram, I have, I can invite people to both of my profile. There's the Dolphina Collective, which is more of the 
you know, professional and the cute grid and everything, the very like, and then you can also follow Dolphino 13 where it's, you want to follow my stories because I try to make people laugh. So that's it. Okay. And then you have a, then you have a website, your own personal website for selling your, your things as well. That's where people would buy from. Absolutely. And I also have an Etsy, an Etsy shop as well. So okay. You do have a lot on the go. Awesome. Oh yeah. Keep myself busy. It's Why like, not? Hey? <laughs> it's funny because recently for the last about six months, I have a helper who comes like a couple of times a week and she helps me with cutting fabric, sewing zippers and getting stuff ready. And she's always like, your brain is always kind of like 15 step ahead trying to figure out new things to bring in and all that stuff so yeah i have a hard time that's the ptsd in me too like it, it's really hard to <laughs> keep like the brain activity down where i can like really relax so, yeah yeah i think a lot of people can relate to that as well well, Sophie, I really appreciate the time you've taken for us today, and um, we are looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better, and, and hopefully the frolic is good to you, and we can get together in person next year. Um, I would love that. It, it would be fun. It would be fun. Would be so, fun. so I will close now, um, and, um, and, and thanks very much for, for everything. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks we'll for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. We'll see you at the frolic. Sounds good. Take care.